What's up everybody, Matt Kajewski here, back again with the Odd Shopper channel, and today we're starting college football bowl season, Saturday, December the 16th. We've got six games. Before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. We also have a limited time promo for you from Bet365. If you live in Kentucky, Ohio, New Jersey, Virginia, Iowa, and Colorado, you can make your first deposit by clicking the link in the video description below. Bet $5 in any market, and whether it wins or loses, you are getting $150 in the form of bonus bets. If you leave, live in Louisiana, who just went live, you have this same promo, except you're betting $1 and you'll get $365 in the form of bonus bets. You must be 21 or older to play, 18 in Kentucky. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, please call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. This offer is limited time, so make sure you take advantage of this as soon as you can. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, please call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. Must be 21 to play again in 18 in Kentucky. All right, so we're going to go game by game, talking the six games on Saturday the 16th. Myself and Ben Raza did do our bowl show. It's the mega show. It's nearly two hours. But you just can't dive as deep when you're talking, what, 41 games? So this will be a little deeper, but make sure you check out that show. There's timestamps, gives you a pick for every game, and we talk spreads and totals as well. But to dive into this, we kick things off with Georgia Southern Ohio. I'm not going to tell you the names of the Bulls. I don't know what they are, and I don't care. I care about the teams, though. So you have 6-6 six and six Georgia Southern taking on 9-3 and three Ohio. The biggest news in this game, the Ohio transfer portal situation. Wide receiver Tyler Walton hit the portal. Wide receiver Miles Cross hit the portal. They already had Jacoby Jones out for the year. So right away, three of your top four receivers are not playing in this game. O'Shane Allison and Say Bangura, both in the portal. You're now down to two running backs who have single digit carries. And then most importantly, Curtis Rourke, 2022 Mac Offensive Player of the Year portal. So you're now down your quarterback, your top two running backs, three of your top four receivers. On defense, they had two players in the secondary miss their most recent game, Austin Brawley and Justin Burchette. They also had linebacker Key Thompson hit the portal. So depleted team. How's Georgia Southern? Well, they don't have anybody in the portal of consequence. A couple of injuries, but it's Justin Myers at safety. It's Walker or Isaac Walker at edge, and they both might return. Fully healthy team here. So Georgia Southern runs the air raid. They're a team that is an excellent offensive line. They're 22nd in pass blocking. The strength of Ohio's defense is their pass rush at 16. That should neutralize the strength of Ohio's defense. Where Ohio is weak is in coverage. They're 71st in coverage. This is just schedule adjusted efficiency. Every time I reference a rank for these metrics, now you're facing the air raid and you're facing elite receivers like Derwin Burgess, Cobb, Davis Brin for all the turnovers he's committed. He has solid efficiency metrics. 64% completion, 6.7 yards per attempt. They don't ask him to do a ton. They should have no problem throwing over the top. So you're asking Ohio to play with an air raid offense and keep pace. You're on your third string quarterback. We didn't even mention this. So Rourke is in the portal. They, they already lost their backup to injury. Now you're on Parker Novaro, who's more of a runner than a thrower to, be, to begin with. Down three of his top four receivers. It's just Wiglets, unproven running backs. Ohio does have a good offensive line that's still fairly intact. They're top 20 in both pass blocking and run blocking. But that's also the strength of Georgia Southern's defense, who's 36th overall in run deep, where they're vulnerable is in coverage. Now you don't have the quarterback or weapons to exploit that. I mean, strength of schedule stuff also benefits Georgia Southern. Ohio plays in the MAC. We're going to lay the points here with Georgia Southern right now. Current spread is three and a half points. The total is 48 and a half. Three and a half is completely fine in my opinion. I was lucky to grab this as a slightly better number, but no reservations here. We'll be playing Georgia Southern. I think alt line stuff is also potentially live. Second game, we go to Louisiana versus Jacksonville State. It's a two and a half point spread in favor of Jacksonville State. The total is 59. Jacksonville State plays at the speed of light. They're number one in pace. Also very run heavy. So like a weird, interesting offense to follow. But they are the team I prefer in this spot. Louisiana sputtered down the stretch. They barely got to six and six. They had to beat Louisiana Monroe in the final game where their quarterback got hurt. But the reason for some of the sputtering is Louisiana, they've dealt with injuries at key positions. 
Right away, their starting quarterback got hurt this year. Then they moved to Zeon Chris, who was actually like a revelation for this team. He broke his leg. So now you're on a third string quarterback. They've had a ton of injuries on offense. Lander Burton, their center's been missing time. They had their best linebacker, Kendry Grant, hit the portal. Also, Courtline Flowers at safety has missed time. And they've just been hemorrhaging production lately. Of their last four games, they lost to Arkansas State, but 37 points they allowed. Lost to Southern Miss, about 34 points. Lost to Troy. I mean, most teams are going to lose to Troy in this conference. And they, then they beat Louisiana Monroe, 52-21. to Jaya Wright didn't play that whole game. So, I mean, this is pretty suspect. On the other side, Jacksonville State has been playing awesome. They barely lost to New Mexico State, 20-17. to They killed Louisiana Tech, barely lost to South Carolina, and killed FIU. This offense is humming. This is Zion Webb's last game. He's the seventh-year quarterback for this team. And they're fairly intact, too. They haven't had any major portal departures yet. So when you look at this team, Jacksonville State, it's going to be run-heavy. They're going to use their quarterback as a designed rusher. That actually exploits Louisiana very well, who is 95th in run defense. It's their biggest weakness. They're decent in coverage, horrific against the run. Meanwhile, Louisiana has kind of morphed into this run-heavy team playing behind their offensive line, which is 20th in pass blocking, 21st in run blocking. It's definitely the strength now that they're on their third-string quarterback. Well, the best part of Jacksonville State's defense is their run D. They're 23rd there, 36th in overall defense. They are somewhat giving in coverage where they're 57th, but man, this is a matchup tailor-made for Jacksonville State. So another one where we're going to lay the points. This one, I think the current line, completely fine at two and a half. Before we move on, I want to talk to you about Odd Shopper Premium. Right now, we have a deal for you guys where you can go and take a look at Odd Shopper Premium by clicking the link in the video description below. There's a ton of awesome stuff going on. Like I can't even keep up with a lot of what we have going on with the Odd Shopper Premium. But it's a market-based approach to betting. Basically what this is, is it looks at all sorts of valuable sportsbook information, determines which ones are the most efficient, and then builds out a model that finds inefficient lines across the industry for you to take advantage of. And it's not just that. We have tons of stuff, player props. There's some, all sorts of filters you can look at if you only want to look at a couple books, certain markets, certain sports, you can do that. There's expert analysis from our team all available with our i mean it, it's basically now combined our discord insider access and all the odd chopper tools into one single package so if you're interested in this come aboard click the link in the video description below it is there for you all right we'll move on to our third game which is appalachian state miami ohio this game poor total had 44 and a half points six and a half points spread in favor of app state this is the first game I haven't bet that we've talked about so far. A lot of this just comes down to Miami, Ohio lost their starting quarterback, Brett Gabbard, due to injury. And now Avion Smith, their backup quarterback, who's been reasonable, hit the portal. So this team has an awesome defense. I think maybe the best defense in the MAC is them or Toledo. They're 20th overall, 16th against the run, 30th in coverage. It's not going to be easy sledding for App State, but App State has had success against very good defenses. They lost to Troy, but they put up 23 points. They beat James Madison, who's an awesome defense as well. What it comes down to is I think App State still has ways to score. Joey Aguilar's there, quarterback. Nate Noel hit the portal, but you still have tons of running backs like Kanye Roberts, Anderson Castles giving them good snaps. And then you have solid receivers like Caden Robinson. They're still intact. Defense is intact as well. So, I mean, I, the explosiveness of this App State offense is going to get home at some point. The question is, can Miami, Ohio crawl back into it if App State gets an explosive score? Henry Hassan at quarterback is entirely unproven. Again, he's a third stringer. He does have Gage Larvidane, but man, this offensive line has problems. They're 94th in pass blocking, 72nd in run blocking. You can't fall back on the run if you're this team. They already were horrifyingly bad scoring with Avion Smith. Now you go to the third stringer. Man, like I think my favorite bet is Miami, Ohio under the team total. I'm in an illegal state, so I can't even find this right now. I mean, you can make inferred guess based on the line in the in the total in the game, but man, it's under a pass. It's under Miami, Ohio team total or pass. But I personally don't think this is the best betting game because of the low scoring potential. 
Next game, game four, we have New Mexico State taking on Fresno. This is one I actually like a total in. I'm interested in the over. The biggest concern is pacing. New Mexico State, New Mexico State, excuse me, they play at a snail's pace. But even with this poor pacing, they've just been in shootout after shootout. They lost to Liberty 49-35. Their quarterback got hurt. Otherwise, they likely could have scored more. Played a relatively low-scoring game against Jacksonville State. That'll happen. They beat Auburn 31-10. They beat Western Kentucky 38-29. Like you can see, this team has been in plenty of shootouts despite their poor pace. And they have a bad defense. They're 92nd overall, 75th against the run, and 96th in coverage. That's important against Mikey Keenan, Fresno State, who's going to throw the ball. They have a 60% pass rate and they have all the receivers healthy and intact. Meanwhile, this New Mexico State offense is explosive. Pavia, I cannot believe what he's given this team because it's not like he's playing behind a good offensive line or run game, but he's gotten the most out of these receivers. He has over 800 rushing yards himself. I don't think Fresno State's defense is any good. They're 82nd overall, and they have a weakness against the run where they're 91st. They're actually decent in coverage, 69th there. So you basically have the strength of both offense facing the weakness of both defense, which I believe should allow for explosive plays. Even though pacing doesn't line up, I could see an over getting there, especially with Pavia playing in this game. I know he got banged up in their last contest, but he's going to play here. He's a 61.5% completion, 8.5 yards per attempt, 5.4 yards per carry. And now hopefully Mikey Keene's a little healthier. He'd been battling through injury down the stretch. But his season-long stats are still good. 66% completion, 6.8 yards per attempt, 20 scores, 9 picks. Last four games have been kind of brutal for Keen, but he also rushed his way back from an injury to try to get Fresno to a conference title, which they were unable to do. So I'll take an over at 51 to close out this game. Next one, we go to Boise, UCLA. It's a 2.5 point spread in favor of UCLA. It's actually taking quite a bit of money. I'm seeing 4.5 in some spots. I honestly don't think that's too big of a deal. I took the two and a half, but I would play this through three, show value on it through three. A lot of it comes down to Boise being on a third string quarterback. You lost Mattis Mad, Mad, I don't know why I can't say his name ever. Maddox, Madsen, to an injury. Sorry, sorry everyone. Taylor Green, their backup who's been starting, he hit the portal. You also have Eric McAllister, number one receiver in the portal. Stephen Cobbs is hurt. Shea Whiting's hurt. Chase Penry's hurt. That's three more receivers. Garrett Curran, their center, missed the conference championship. Demetri Washington on the edge has been out on defense. This team is depleted, and their defense is very bad. 105th overall, 97th against the run, 94th in coverage. They basically live through explosive plays on offense, coming via Ashton Genty and George Halani, because the, the pass game's gone. Out of the question here, C.J. Taylor, their new quarterback, is a freshman who has, honestly, pretty questionable high school metrics. I mean, we'll see what they can get out of him. Honestly, I think what it comes down to is if you stop Genty, you stop the Boise offense. So can UCLA score? This team, they're going to have opt-outs on defense. They're going to have portal stuff on defense. Like Laitu Latu is not going to play. Their edge is going to be in the NFL. They already had Kamari Ramsey, William Nemo, and John Humphreys at the portal. All three of those guys are in their secondary. And again, we talked about the concerns with Boise throwing. I still think it's a concern, even with the departures, like third string freshman quarterback, no receivers. How are they going to move the ball, even on a weak secondary? Anyway, UCLA is still pretty strong up front. Even without Latu, they're going to have a bunch of studs on the defensive line. They're 14th in run defense. And then on offense, this team has really three quarterbacks you can kind of hang your hat on. Moore's gone. He hit the portal, but... Ethan Garbers has honestly been the best signal caller for this team. He's been sort of a floor general. Just get the ball to your playmakers and let them do their thing. 66% completion, 7.3 yards per attempt. Taking care of the ball, nine touchdowns, three picks. And that's important. You still have Sturdivant. You still have Loya. Those guys are going to be able to exploit a Boise defense. Your offensive line is still 26th in run blocking. Even if you can't get elite production, out of your quarterback position, you can still fall back on Carson Steele and TJ Harden running behind this very good run blocking unit. And again, Boise's defense doesn't scare you. So we'll back UCLA. And then to close this out, one game left, Texas Tech, Cal. I do like Texas Tech. I took the minus two and a half. You can find, you can find that number pretty readily available. You can also find threes. I have no issues with the number. 
I think this team is going to be the healthier team. They do some opt-outs we'll get to, but I do think the more impactful opt-outs are on the Cal side. Their defense has already been terrible. 106th overall, 121st against the run, 106th in coverage. Their best units, their pass rush, were their 31st. Their edge rusher, Caleb Elam's or is out. He hit the portal. They also lost Jeremiah Earby. Not to mention Jackson Sermon, their best defender at linebacker, has been out for the year. It's just a defense that can't sustain any more losses. It's not even that I've been impressed with Baron Morton. He's been fine, 62% completion, six yards per attempt. What I have been impressed with Taj Brooks, he should have no problem running the ball. But this team did lose a couple of receivers to the portal. Miles Price, Jaron Bradley, Jaden York at tight end, Tyler King, Luce Fongi, JJ Sparkman. You still have a depth of resources at this position. Xavier White, Koi Eakin, I mean, Trey McRae. They're going to be just fine at receiver. These guys have all played at snaps. So I think Morton's fine. Brooks is fine. Receivers are great. The biggest issue is Monroe Mills, their left tackle portal. Again, no Caleb, Elam, or on the other side. I think that's pretty neutral. You lost the best edge rusher. You lost your best tackle. I mean, the body of work for these two teams isn't comparable. Just efficiency-wise, Texas Tech 59th in offense, Cal 66th. Defense, Texas Tech is 87th. Cal is 106th. We went through some of the Cal stuff, but I won't dive into every single metric here. There's just so much working in Texas Tech's favor, even coming off the blowout loss against Texas. So we'll lay the points here, and that'll do it for the video. I know it's a lot of chalk favorites, a couple totals in there, but if you have comments, please leave them below. If you have questions, you can reach out on Twitter, at Matt underscore Gajewski. We'll be doing these videos for every single game. And of course, check out the mega video with myself and Ben Raza on this very channel if you want more bowl games early on in the week. Until then, good luck, everyone. We'll see you next time.